Thank you very much, Tom, for that very kind, thoughtful, warm, and accurate introduction. <laughs> Next week, I will be celebrating the 20th anniversary of my fourth decade. Don't tell me I'm in denial. <laughs> I want to commend the High Speed Rail Authority and the Governor for listening to the concerns that have been raised about High Speed Rail over the last year. Uh, Dan Richard, Mike Rossi, uh, Tom Richard, you're to be commended along with the other board members and the authority staff because uh, you have taken the time to listen. You have taken the time to incorporate the issues that have been raised. Transparency, construction costs, ridership numbers, and long-term funding have to be addressed to make this project viable. Mitigation in the valley, especially for agriculture, what has been the heart and soul of this valley for decades and generations, must be addressed and must be a part of the solution. But I know you know that. All major projects, infrastructure pa projects, past and present, have had their share of controversy. Even the Bay Bridge had its naysayers. Stephen Ambrose, the noted American historian, wrote a book called Nothing Like It in the World, really all about the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad. Think about it, 1862, perhaps the most difficult time in our nation's history, the country being torn apart on the great Civil War, Civil War that had our states fighting one another, President Lincoln trying to figure out how to finance that great Civil War, the issuing of paper money, inflation running rampant, Get the picture I'm drawing? Perhaps the most difficult time in our nation's history. Yet in 1862, President Lincoln decided we're going to build a railroad across the nation. That's what America's always been about. We've always been about focusing on the future and the challenges of the present. So costs, timing, and sustainability will always be a concern of undertaking such as this. That is natural. Some of these critiques, if you think about it, have been leveled against projects that I am pushing every day on behalf of our state and our valley, like fixing our water system in the Delta, the peripheral canal, adding storage capacity like projects of Temperance Flat and raising Shasta Dam. All of these projects are important to invest in our future, yet there are criticisms levied for each of those projects in terms of timing, in terms of cost, in terms of sus sustainability. Yet it's clear the economic benefits of these projects cannot be ignored for California today or tomorrow. And that's what high-speed rail is all about. Since the beginning, I have called for transparency and accountability, including our recent request for the Government Accountability Office to complete a comprehensive audit of this project. They are undergoing that process today as we speak. The good news is, is that the new business plan marks a willingness to incorporate and accommodate the reasonable concerns to create the smarter plan that Governor Brown suggested just a few months ago would be better, faster, and cheaper. And Chairman Dan Richards, uh, Authority Members Mike Rossi and Tom Richard have followed the Governor's lead, better, faster, and cheaper. The new business plan addresses those efforts. The spirit of America has always been about having a vision to think big to think big today in order to address tomorrow's challenges. This is about the future, it's about the economy, and it's about jobs. Jobs and the economy for a part of California that significantly needs a shot in the arm. At the end of the day, if our nation is to move forward, we must, we must be willing to invest 
in the future and invest in our infrastructure of all kinds, transportation, water projects, things that will get America going again and create the jobs that have been a part of our history. It's what previous generations of Americans have done. Now it's up to us. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to commend the efforts that have been made. I want to commend the new business plan as it gets the scrutiny it does, it must go through. But let us remember that investing in our future, investing in our infrastructure has always, always been what America is all about. Thank you very much. Let me introduce our next speaker, a gentleman who uh, is just as young as I am. I know that because he and I went to high school together just a few years ago. Supervisor is a part of this district, Supervisor Henry Perea from District 3, who's doing a terrific job. Supervisor Perea.